So I want to thank you for coming to this uh, site and I'm going to just give a quick overview here on this uh, Close Ready Mac page. So the reason I chose that domain name is because um, I'll say something about the, the essence of Freddie Mac some other time uh, in relation to a book I'm working on. That's not what this is about. Uh, I worked for Freddie Mac for just over a year and I was fired for reporting um, some abuse. Now I put up with enormous amount of abuse for a year and then some 20 year old little girl just had gotten out of uh, VCU and it was a black woman who was in her 30s and both of them were competent in their own way and um, there were some pretty terrible things said before there and even said to them after they came in and done to them in a certain sense I mean so uh, I'm not going to go through all that detail in this video here but um, but uh, what you're going to find is, first of all on the page I want you to do just a few things for me number one there's an audio file I converted it from uh, audio up to off of my iPhone up to uh, mp4 so it's just a static picture it's a YouTube video but it's just audio what it is, is that there were two people near my desk. <clears throat> and um, one of the guys had gone to a club in D.C. And there was some sort of show or something. I don't know how he got the recording. But he was playing the recording in the office. Now, early in the audio, the so-called manager, just a kid, he uh, walks right past so you can hear his voice. And then there's another guy who speaks right after that. And so then the audio is played and I recorded all of that. And you'll notice the foul language. And in particular, if you have headphones on and listen carefully, you can hear the N-word used a lot. Now let me put this in context. Freddie Mac, just like Fannie Mae, is an organization that buys mortgages from banks around the country. Let's suppose, for example, a local bank, a small bank, has $10 million in available cash to issue out. In mortgage loans for homes and in their little region there the market gets hot and they burn through all their cash and they have loaned it all out to for people to buy homes so they'd like to do a few more because perhaps a builders in the area doing a subdivision and he has another 20 houses so there could be another 20 loans to uh, be issued out it's say 300,000 a crack 400,000 a crack so he needs he needs the capital back in his hands so Freddie Mac buys those mortgages up and then packages them together and puts them out on the market. So Freddie Mac, with its fees and things of that nature, makes money by doing that. Now, looking at their own stats on their own page there from the, their most recent filing, uh, a couple of recent filings on their own site, <clears throat> they made a comprehensive income, uh, income, as they say, that's their wording, between March and September of this year, in those two quarters, second and third quarter, comprehensive in income was $4.3 billion right in the middle of the CCP virus. 4.3 billion on people while 20 million people out of work. Um, <clears throat> and then you have here, it is January, and you have uh, the, the uh, rental moratorium uh, collection lifted, or I don't know if one of the laws passed in Congress is, is still holding on to that idea, I haven't seen. When you have a 5,000 page document, who knows what's going on anymore, and the news certainly doesn't report these things, so. Um, but anyway, so that's Freddie Mac, and I was involved in a 10,000 unit, or roughly actually maybe 8,000 unit uh, computer migration. So um, the VP of HR is named Jackie Welch, and she is a black woman. And I contacted her uh, July 17th of 2020, and she didn't respond to me. And I have a lot of other contacts with those people there about the things that went on. And um, so the second time in August when I contacted them, um, the, uh, the lawyer responded, Greg Watchman. Now, why I contacted it in July is because I finally had enough. Um, I was going along minding my business and there was these two characters that I had worked with and put up for with a year. And this one guy walks up to me, his name is Fod, and he said to me, out of sky blue, you know why we hated you when you first came here? Who talks to people that way? I'm in my 50s, and this punk is in his 30s. Who do you think you're talking to? So, <clears throat> that um, that was like a, a an arrow through a bird kind of a thing. That just, 
that was it. I um, never recovered from that, really. So I said, okay, well, now I'm going to say something. And things got worse. They hired two, those two young ladies, and I said something to the female manager. The female manager had the audacity to say, well, go, go to your contracting company and tell them. Tell them what? It was all internal. So the things that eventually, I, I, after I got fired, it took me two months looking through my notes, putting them together, editing. I, I just couldn't write. I, I would write some of the stuff down, and then I was reliving it. And then some of the notes I had forgotten. And assembling them together and you know, looking up the case laws and things like that and the relevant uh, rules and stuff for compensation, all kinds of things for these kind of damages and retaliation and stuff. Uh, it took me two months to write that all out. In the last week, I wrote uh, the documentation, edited it down. To, I got it down and it, was, it ended up being 53 pages with another document that's 47 pages of evidences. And then 12 separate pieces, um, the audio, got a couple videos and some pictures and stuff like that. Um, but that final night on that Friday, when I was um, uh, finishing up the editing and, and putting final product to send over to Freddie Mac, and well, for that matter, to the EOC and to um, uh, the, the IGs and everything, uh, my nose started bleeding. That's never happened before. I was so stressed from writing that document and reliving it that my nose started bleeding. And that's part of the evidence uh, that I sent to them. And so they've been sitting on their hands uh, since November, early November on this. And they said in October, on October 17th, the, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Greg Watchman wrote to me and said, very sorry. Well, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, you know, sitting around. And um, so, um, um, so going back to the point then, on the page for the moment, uh, Take a look at the, the PDF. It's only two pages of, of the 53 pages. It's some of the more egregious statements. And um, I'm going to mention one thing, but and then I will finish up and you can go in there. And then, of course, then the audio. Uh, so those are the two things I'm just putting up in now. Um, I encourage you to contact Congress and contact the media and say, you know, what have you heard about this? Um, because... Um, these guys are holding $2 trillion of the United States mortgages. 79% of Freddie Mac is owned by the Treasury. That means you own Freddie Mac. This is your money. And incidentally, that 8,000 unit migration, somebody said of their own volition in a passing conversation, not to me, that the project was budgeted for $10 million. And as of last summer, uh, it was all the way up to $16 million and still climbing. And there are a lot of things there that I can talk about in terms of the project itself, what was going wrong. Uh, they don't have a clue of what they're doing over there. They fired their chief information security officer, the CISO, uh, in June of 2020, and the deputy, because they missed, they, they red boxed their uh, checks on, the, um, on security at Freddie Mac. Fired them. And those, two, and those positions had to be taken over by the CIO, a guy named Frank Navarro. I mean, seriously, you know, and look, and let's, I mean, we're sitting in an age with solar winds and, and, and then these guys are not even passing their own uh, internal checks for security. They're holding about $2 trillion in mortgages. You know, that, that opens all kinds of crazy doors that your information is attached to these things. Your home loan is attached to this, some of you, and, and if you think... You know, well, you're an apartment rental. Freddie Mac has a multifamily section that does mortgages for, for rentals. So when you have this big, you know, apartment complex or something like that where rentals are going on, they are issuing out mortgages for those people too. They have an entire section. So, um, this is quite a serious mess. And, but if you think this is a frivolous, let me just end this introduction video by saying one thing. There was a guy, those two guys who were listening to that audio that, that you can hear there in that MP4 uh, down there, uh, just down the page, those two guys uh, were talking to, to each other um, before that on another day. And one of the guys blurted out, out of sky blue, he said, 
And this is the gist. This gives you a flavor of working at Freddie Mac. Sitting 10 feet from me, he says to the other guy, I wonder what it would be like to kill somebody. I wonder if I would feel remorse if I touched the body. Freddie Mac, in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Now, if you think that's Oakley Doakley, then I suggest that you call David Brickman and ask him what he thinks about it at 703-903-2000. That's the main number for Freddie Mac. You can look it up. I have more personal contact information with him. I'm not going to give it out because that's, that's a doxing. I'm involved in a legal matter right now to get a settlement from them. Not going to hand that up. But you can call him, or call Greg Watchman, or call Jackie Welch and ask them, what kind of lunatic organization are you running where you have somebody in the office who says that? How do you say these kinds of things in an American company or government office? And because Freddie Mac is 79% owned by the government, it's effectively a federal agency. You're just missing the other 21%. It's a majority owned by the Treasury. Just like USDA, Smithsonian, or not Smithsonian, but uh, Department of Commerce, you know, Department of Transportation, Health and Human Services. It's pretty close to that. You, the taxpayer, paid for that kind of thing. And I am fired. And that person was able to walk out the door and get about either a 10 or 20% raise. Just like that. So if I seem a little bit irritated, a little bit angry, i got 53 pages of anger and then I've got my uh, exhibits and I'm tired of waiting around for settlement. And, it's, and if so if they want to play hardball, that's what this is going to be. I'm going to put everything out there. And brace yourself because when you see the PDF and when you listen to the, um, listen to the audio, then you begin to get a taste. And that was just one year. Just one year. And it's still not everything. There's still more, even than what I put over there. But it's the ones, uh, you'll, you'll find the two pages breathtaking. And so will Chuck Grassley, because I sent him a copy of this whole thing. I sent him a copy of everything, not just the mere short part. And the, and the House Oversight and the Senate Oversight Committees for, for FHFA. Yeah, these are the people that are they're in charge of your mortgage. These are the people who are controlling the IT assets that could you know, do who knows what. And I'll say one other thing about the, the IT migration that we had. So I started work in July of 2019, and when I walked in the door, a guy named Nick said that the um, migration was already two years behind, had done nothing. And we sat there and fooled around and did nothing from July until October. When they finally got their act together, and when they did, they decided to switch vendors from HP to Dell. No testing, no nothing, just sky blue decided to switch the vendors. And above on the racks, they had nearly a thousand computers that had been sitting there in the box. Brand new. Uh, HP 4s, excuse me, HP 6s, I think it was. Laptops. Brand new for two years. Not issued out. Nothing. And they went out and bought brand new Dells. And then they had an overheating problem because they didn't test them. And so they had to throttle back the CPU on the Dells because they were overheating. Yeah. When I left there, or, or, or I'd say when they did an audit in August, they could not find 500 tagged assets. Now tagging refers to LCDs, laptops, machines, all kinds of things. Um, but still... They could not account for 500 assets in the audit. So, it's um, Freddie Mac is a is a uh, is an unnecessary burden to American people. They say it, it helps people uh, get homes. In 2004, Freddie Mac fired their whistleblower because he was pointing out subprime loans and Alt-A loans. It's, it's it's a congressional testimony from uh, a congresswoman out of uh, New York State. I can't think of her name off the top of my head. But uh, it's out on the internet. And uh, somewhere around 2008, the, the uh, attorney for the Southern District of New York uh, indicted the top level, C-levels for Freddie Mac. 
for lying to Congress or lying about their results and stuff. They have a history of very bad behavior. They have a history of um, firing whistleblowers and, and retaliating, things of that nature. Yeah. And there's no accountability. And uh, David Brickman, and Greg Watchman, and Jackie Welch need to be held accountable because it's your money. So brace yourself and more is coming. Thanks and uh, uh, feel free to put this out on Twitter, put it out anywhere you want, Facebook, send it to anybody to the news and, and please do feel free to question, send an email, um, ask any question you want, be reasonable, uh, don't make threats, just, or if you don't have questions, you have comments, constructive criticism, yeah, go for it, just don't, don't, uh, don't F-bomb, don't use foul language, just don't do it. Don't don't use substitution with asterisks, just don't do it. Write normal, standard English and um, and make your point. I would be interested in hearing what you have to say. But do feel free to send this around to anybody. Because um, I'm standing by everything I say. Thanks, and welcome to the site.